Hi, it's Jenny from Ginger Ninja Crafts and I am here in my craft room during the lockdown and I thought I would share a little crafty project with you today and um, I'd love to see if any of you have a go at it. I'll leave all the measurements in the um, in the description so you'll be able to refer back to those um, but I suppose I should show you what I'm going to make. So I don't know about you but I have loads of photographs lying around my house that I've never put them into an album or frames or anything. Um, so I made a little photo album in a box. Good long arms worked. Um, and I have used some of my crafty tools but it's just because I've got them. If you don't have them you can probably get by without them and think creatively. So I got this um, idea from an old die cutting essentials magazine. It's issue 60. I don't know how long ago that is. Quite old. I've got lots of old craft magazines lying around. And it is from Laura Roman and she um she shared this project so so I'm using her measurements and everything. So I'm going to use a guillotine to cut, um, but if you don't have one, you've probably got pencil, ruler and scissors, so you can just mark it, measure it, mark it and cut it. Down. So we're going to cut two squares to make the box part. The first square is going to be six inches. And the next one is five and an eight inches. Okay, so there we go. And I'll pop this out of the way. Now the next thing I'm going to use that you might not have is a scoreboard. Um, but all this does is just scores where we want to fold. So if you don't have a scoreboard, you can use your ruler and your and a, a kind of bluntish pencil to make a mark um, or you could use a felt tip pen with the lid still on and just use the kind of hard cap to, to leave a mark um, but I'm going to use my scoreboard because I've got it so the smaller square I'm going to score round oh, get the right measurement score round at half an inch an inch all the way round all four sides if you can tell I can't talk and concentrate at the same time hey so that's what I mean all four sides you've got the this border and these little squares in the corner the bigger square this is the six inch one you're going to draw you're going to score round at an inch. Okay, so that's got a much wider border. I'll pop that in there too. So, I'm going to use this, which is called a bone folder, to... Um, fold up and give a nice smooth edge to all these creases. You just need something that is smooth and kind of flattish. So a ruler would do um, if you don't have a bone folder. Just gives a nice sharp edge. So, on all sides. And then this one. <coughs> Okay, now to be able to fold it um, into the box shape we're going to create some tabs in these little squares in the corner. So I'm going to cut from the edge up to the line and then from the corner. So 
so you cut out a little triangle and you get that little tab now it doesn't matter which side of the triangle you leave attached and which you take out it won't make any difference at all um, You can see there, they're kind of all going in different directions. It's fine. And just do the other one too. So by doing that, it makes it... Um, less bulky at the corners it makes for the, the box to sit nicer together i am using a wet glue this is a pva glue it is called anita's tacky pva glue and um, so you can use pva if you've got it or if you don't you could try print stick or double-sided sailing tape whatever you've got all right i'm just gonna glue on the tabs like so and then the, the wet glue just needs a little bit of time um, for that glue to do its job okay so I am using some bulldog clips I think that's what they're called. It's my last one. Here it is. Okay. You see, I've just clipped them on and it just holds it tight, puts a bit of pressure on until it's nicely stuck in place. Now, if you don't have any bulldog clips, um, you could try maybe a clothes peg, um, especially if it's one of those kind of wooden little hinged pegs. They probably have got quite good pressure. Um, but see what you've got. If not, you can do it like this. Put the glue on, put it in position, hold it. Sing a song probably not happy birthday we're all a bit sick of singing happy birthday um but there you go so it doesn't need to be too long you see that's that's holding now um if you're doing it with double-sided tape you probably don't need to do that um it tends to be a much more instant stick but it doesn't let you move things about as nicely and i tend to never put things down in the exact spot i need to so so, now we get the moment of truth. Now we've stuck our box together and we need to see, does it fit? So take off my bulldog clips. And... Da -da -da -da. Phew. <laughs> so that's good. So that's your basic box. Now, the other bits I've done is I have, on the one I did yesterday, I added some little patterned papers. So I've just you know, cut some little strips of pattern papers and popped them on. So you can do that if you want. You can do that before you fold it up if you want, whatever you find easiest. Um, if you don't have pattern papers, I'll show you. I use this pack that I've had for months. From the works it was three pounds so if you've got if you're like me you buy kind of pretty papers you probably have some at home if not if you've got any wrapping paper or have you got um just a piece of blank paper like printer paper that you could get some color on it some scribbles some spots some lines some arrows some flowers you can just make something colourful that you can then pop round the edge. 
So we've got the basics of the box. The next thing we need to do is get pages for our photos to go on to. Now again, I have a die cutting machine and a lot of dies, so I have die cut some shapes out. So I've, this one, I've gone for these, which are kind of like a postage stamp, and I've cut my photos out into a square. So they're going to stick on, can you guess what the theme of our of my little album is? Um, this is Mr Ginger and the Crafts here. Um, so it kind of looks like a stamp, but if you don't have a die cutting machine, plain squares would do, or draw around a circle if you've got a mug or a, a glass that would, you just need something that's going to sit nicely inside your box. Um, I've got eight of these already cut out, so I'm, I'm going to line these all up. The other thing you need is some ribbon. Um, I have, that's another thing I hoard. Us crafty people have got lots of hoards of everything. Um, so I found this one which I thought fitted quite nicely. Um, it's got the love hearts on it. But maybe you've got a piece of ribbon that's been on a bouquet of flowers. Um, quite often Marks and Spencers, like maybe chocolates or Easter things have ribbon. I've got quite a lot of nice ribbons that on one side it says Marks and Spencers, on the other side it's it's um, a plain colour. Could you use something like that? I'm sure other shops do it as well. So I'm just lying this flat because if you can hear a voice my husband is um, working from home <laughs> so I'm just going to lay out my um, pages in a straight line and what I've done is I've just put some double sided um, sticky tape on and you need your ribbon to be longer a little bit longer than whatever shape you've got all laid out i've let you want to leave a little space between and you can see there's like a little gap between them it doesn't need to be a big gap it's just enough to to kind of let them to fold nicely so i have the slightly fiddly task now of taking the back off these sticky tape if you don't have double sided sticky tape, again you can just glue them down. Um, um, I had to buy, going off topic, I had to buy a different bin for my craft room because my one of my cats, the, the crazy ginger cat that you see in the local, these little bits that come off the double sided plastic, he loves to eat them and you find them in the litter tray. Probably not very good for him. So we um I had to buy a little pedal bin that you have to put your foot on it to open it up so that we could keep him away from them because um I had like a little swing bin and he tips it up. And um, he knew if he knocked it over, the lid would pop off and he could get inside to get them. Too clever, that one. So, I hope you can see what I am doing. I am now just sticking the ribbon there. Now, the next thing we need to do is we want to keep that ribbon nice, uh, nicely in position because that's going to be the mechanism for our um, album. So I have, again, I've cut these out with my die cutting machine. You can just draw around a cup or something. So you could do it with circles or squares or whatever. So I have just got some patterned paper little hearts. So I've got Four of them that are like that. Four of them are like that. So 
Oh, it is. Just a case of popping some glue on them all. And then sticking them down. So it just acts as a little bit of a barrier to keep that ribbon in place. So I'm going with my two patterns, I'm just doing them alternately. Um, what you could also do is if you were going to give this to somebody, you know, maybe you are doing shopping um, for somebody who's not getting out and about at the moment um, to get their own shopping. Maybe you could make up this um, and pop it in with their shopping. I'm sure if you give your hands a really good wash before you did it, um, then that would probably be okay. Um, And on the back, instead of just pretty pattern paper, you could write wee notes, you could write who's in the photographs or something like that. So, what we have now is, let's do it the right way up, a little kind of string, but these are the backs and this is the front and we're going to decorate the front so that that looks nice when it goes into the album. So I thought that I would print off some pictures from our wedding, um, which is just over three years ago. So I've already cut out a few and you want them all to be facing the same direction um, so I've got one, the first one that I'm putting up there is, I'll show them, I'll stick them down and then I'll, I'll show them just in case you want to have a wee, a wee peek. Um, and obviously you get loads and loads of photos from a wedding day. So this is just the kind of, I've just gone for the kind of ceremony bit really. Um, and I've included, obviously, me and my husband. Um, and our parents and bridesmaid and best man. But you know, you could do you could do something where you draw pictures to pop them on if you're creative or you could put um, pictures from a day out or a favourite hobby or something. So I've stuck all my pictures on now. So I'll show you them, I'll give you a sneak peek. So this, the first one here is, this is our wedding, um, wedding bouquets from myself from my bridesmaid. And this was a little charm that I had on my bouquet with a picture of my dad, because he um, sadly passed away, so he wasn't, wasn't physically there on the day. Uh, this is me and my bridesmaid, Louise. You see how this folds up? This is my husband and um, his best man, who's also the bridesmaid's husband. Me and my mum making our way up the aisle, although we got married in um, in the bush in South Africa, so it was really into the, the forest. Um, and this is my husband. That's Phil the best man peeking over and this is my father-in-law and my mother-in-law, don't worry, she's 
got a better picture, I think. Um, that's us saying our vows with our minister. Oh yeah, this is afterwards. So, uh, my husband and I, and we had instead of confetti, we had popcorn thrown at us, um, because obviously there's lots of wildlife there. We got married on a game reserve, so um, the popcorn was um, safe for the monkeys to eat afterwards. Um, and this is my mother-in-law, who's also since since passed away, sadly. And then Elman and I walking off um, into the forest in black and white. So that is my little pages. Now, how to stick them into the album. So I want to just pop a wee bit of double-sided tape at the bottom for the the bottom of the ribbon just to keep it nicely in the album so I just cut a bit stuck it down and peeled the top off and oh phone's ringing and I've stuck that in and then that's all the pages in now to keep to allow you to open the lid, what we need to do is just cut a little slit in. And this is why you want to leave a longer tail because what you're going to do is just make a loop. And I'm going to do that again with some double sided tape. But if you've got some probably need double sided tape or like fabric glue or something to keep the ribbon um, or you could put a stitch or two in I suppose if you've got a needle and thread to hand okay. so I'm just forming a loop with that and then popping it through there. Okay, so as I say, you can add some decoration around the side, you can even add some decoration to the top, maybe write a wee message, especially if it's for a gift for somebody. And then you just lift it up and stretch. So there you go, that is how to make a little album in a box. If you have a goal and make one, I'd love it if you'd let me know in the comments. You can always share a photograph of your little album in a box or if you've just enjoyed watching and it's taking your mind off everything that's happening out there at the moment then leave me a comment and let me know that too um, we're all having to communicate from a bit of a further distance at the moment aren't we so um, thank you very much for watching and um, I have a list of other projects that I'm going to be making over the next um, few days and weeks so I hope you might come back and join me again Take good care, stay home as much as humanly possible and stay well people. Thanks very much, bye.